It's happening right under our noses and nobody's talking about it. Well, allow me. Hey, Vlad here from devinsideu.com. Welcome to another video. SBT 2.0 is in the works and it's gonna come with tons of features and improvements, but this video is about only one of them. Yep, an entire video about just one feature. And in fact, it's not even the feature itself that is worth discussing. It's the implications of it. If, or dare I say, when implemented, SBT will never be the same again. Let me tell you all about it right after the message from our sponsors, scalajobs.com and rustjobs.dev. Be sure to check out the links in the description if you're looking for a job. This video is also brought to you by awesome people like yourself who support me on platforms like Patreon, GitHub sponsors, or by joining the YouTube membership program. Your contributions allow me to pay for a video editor who frees some of my time, which I then again spend with you, whether it's during your live streams or answering your questions on Discord. There's many of you and only one of me, so all it takes is a dollar. Huge shout out to my highest tier patron, Fred Albu. Thank you. All right, now I'm not gonna make you sit through the entire video without telling you what we're talking about first. It's about SPT caching ideas. The TLDR is that all things will be cached. If you scroll down the article, you see it talks about caching more things to disk, remote caching, HTTP, all kinds of things. Now, caching on its own doesn't sound too exciting, does it? Well, sure, some things will be faster, some other things will be much faster, but at the end of the day, what's the big deal? Well, the big deal is that the SBT build, after its cache, of course, would load not just faster, but instantaneously. And if it loads instantaneously, then what reason could you possibly have to go inside of SBT shell to run your tasks like compile, run, or test, for instance? Think about it. One of the things that SBT did drastically different since its inception is forcing or at least heavily encouraging its users to go inside of SBT shell and stay there all day or, you know, at least until the memory runs out. I believe the original goal was to keep the JVM warm. Let's back up real quick because it's important. I have a confession to make. Yes, like in the song. I was still in college when SBT came out and it was the first build tool that I've ever used. I don't need your pity, I'll, I'll manage. Now, I knew about things like Ant and Maven, but I haven't used them beyond a hello world maybe. Later, I learned about other things like Bazel, Pans, Nix, and many other things like Gradle, for instance, but SBT has always remained my main build tool. The point I'm trying to make is that back then, I didn't have enough experience to comprehend what SBT took away from me, namely the shell. Not the terminal, because it's still a CLI and therefore, by definition, it runs in the terminal, but it replaces my beloved shell with its own. Back when I was a student, I didn't know the power of the shell, but now that I do, I don't want to give it away. This is significant. In fact, I wish that the initial presentations about Mill focused on this more. I remember the conversation being rather about SPT being too hard to configure, and therefore there was an incentive to create another build tool. Now, I'm a very curious fellow, and so checking out Mill was on my to-do list anyway. But it has never been a priority because I grew up with SPT, so I wasn't bothered by its alleged configuration complexity. And so when I finally sat down to properly check it out, I noticed something interesting. It fully caches the build, so you interact with it like with any other CLI tool, like Git for example. It felt liberating. In fact, I had a similar feeling when Bloop first came out. But Bloop was never meant to be a proper build tool. For instance, it can't format my code, it can't publish jars, it can't run a background task like an HTTP server, and it can't even collect user input because it was never meant to do those things. Mill can do all of that, and hopefully SBT 2.0 will be able to do all of that as well without forcing its shell upon us. Now let's imagine what this would mean. First of all, a proper shell like bash, csh, or fish can do magical things for you. Things like syntax highlighting, amazing history that can be piped into amazing tools like FCF, it has fancy prompts that show you a bunch of useful information, and aliases out of the box just to name a few things. There is more. Environment variables, for instance, are a standard way to configure backend applications. Well, try to use environment variables if SBT takes 20 seconds to start. I sincerely believe that the reason why libraries like the TypeSafe config are so prominent in the Scala ecosystem is because you can change the config and the new values will be picked up without you needing to reload the SBT build. In fact, the whole notion of reloading SBT would be an echo of the past. By the way, if you're thinking that the SBT server solves the environment variable issue, Think again, not even if you forked a run task. Good luck. In fact, the entire SBT shell could go away, which would make the SBT server more ergonomic. 
For now, after launching the server, the shell prints out a bunch of crap because the server was bolting on top of something that was never meant to be a server. I got more examples, by the way. For instance, a plethora of plugins will become obsolete. Plugins that allow you to run git commands from SBT shell or even display git segment in SBT shell prompt. No shell no prompt. Or how about something like the SBT Revolver, a phenomenal plugin that will simply become unnecessary. I'm telling you, SBT will never be the same again. I'm sure there is many more examples. In fact, if I've forgotten a thing or two, please let me know in the comments below. I'm really excited about the future of SBT and as already mentioned, this is just one feature, there is many many more. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Eugenio Okara and all the other SBT contributors for not only years of amazing work, but also for admirable handling of accusations about SBT's flaws. You could have thrown in the towel anytime, but you didn't. Thank you. Alright, I hope you enjoyed this one, check out the previous one and I'll see you in the next one. For now, as always, it's been Vlad from devinsidey.com. Don't forget to like this video if you did, subscribe if you want to improve the developer inside you, and if you wish to contribute to tech education, please consider doing so on platforms like Patreon, GitHub sponsors, or by clicking on the join button below and watch my videos before everyone else. Most importantly, take care.